Hello everyone, so in this video we will be seeing how to do multiple linear regression when your data has both continuous and categorical variables. So this is the same uh, data set that I used in my previous video. Thickness is the variable of interest. React1, React2 and time are continuous variables. Vessel number and shift, these are categorical variables. Vessel is a uh, three level categorical variable with uh, values 1, 2 and 3. Shift is a two level categorical variable. Uh, 1 and 2 are the values. So before uh, doing the uh, multiple linear regression, I'm going to explain using PowerPoint how jump treats uh, categorical variables. So let me switch over to uh, uh, the PowerPoint. So uh, jump does something called uh, effect coding behind the scenes. So in the case of shift, it is a two level categorical variable. So when it's doing the fitting, it actually changes the values to 1 and minus 1. So uh, it changes 1 and 2 to 1 and minus 1 and uh, it uses the uh, uh, the 1 and minus 1 values for uh, doing the fitting. Uh, and in the case of vessel number which is a three level categorical variables the values are 1, 2 and 3. Uh, so it uses uh, two, uh, two coordinates uh, you, can, you can put it that way. So uh, it changes 1 to 1 and uh, 0 and 2 becomes 0 and 1 and 3 is uh, represented as minus 1 and 1. So it changes the uh, actual value. So in this case, let's say you have a variable which has text. Uh, jump actually does something similar. So if you have two different uh, categories, then one category will be represented by a number say 0 and the other one will be represented by 1 or something like that. So let me switch over to uh, jump in order to do the multiple linear regression. So in order to do that, you go to uh, analyze and then fit model. Here you choose uh, thickness as the y variable and then all the uh, continuous and categorical variables as your construct model effects and then say run. Uh, so here you can see that jump has done the fitting. You can see the leverage plots and uh, you can see the effect summary which shows the summary of uh, the p-values which is uh, for, for all the five variables and residuals are uh, not showing any pattern so this says that the fitting is good and if you come to summary of it this something that we can observe here is that when we did the similar fitting uh, with only the continuous variables we saw that the r-square value was 0 0.79 and RMSE was 0 0.8 but now when we introduce two of these categorical variables, the R square value went up and the root mean square also, uh, value went down, which is good. And here, whenever we do uh, multiple linear regression, uh, it's seen that uh, the R square value actually goes up if you increase the number of variables. Uh, so that's why uh, R square adjusted is uh, usually used uh, instead of R square when you're doing multiple linear regression. So let me switch over to PowerPoint to explain uh, what this is. So R square adjusted uh, actually accounts for a penalty um, which is based on the number of additional terms. So this is the formula that is used for calculating R, R square adjusted which kind of uses the R square value. Now, uh, if you look at uh, the ANOVA table, you can see that the p-value is uh, less than the significant uh, 0.05. Uh, which means that uh, the model fitting is uh, uh, significant and uh, you can see under the parameter estimates table uh, you have estimates for uh, all the variables except uh, uh, we know that uh, vessel uh, number is a three level categorical uh, uh, data but here we are seeing uh, estimates only for uh, two of the uh, uh, the coefficients and shift we have uh, it's a two level categorical uh, data but we have we are seeing only one coefficient this is because uh, whenever a jump does this effect coding some of these parameter estimates will equal to zero for uh, each of these uh, variables so let me switch out to powerpoint to explain that so from the table uh, so as i mentioned before some of the estimates are zero so that means if you uh, sum up all the uh, coefficient it sums up to zero so we have uh, coefficient values for two of the variables so we can easily find the uh, the coefficient for the third one similarly for shift as well uh, we can uh, calculate the uh, coefficient value now um, 
You can also see that uh, under the FX test, it's giving uh, individual p-values for each of these uh, variables. And here, uh, I think when we did uh, uh, the multiple linear regression with uh, only the continuous variables, we did see that uh, time was insignificant. Uh, but here uh, we kind of see that shift is also kind of uh, insignificant. So this is how uh, you do uh, multiple linear regression. Oh, additionally, you can also use the, uh, you can uh, go to the red triangle option and uh, then uh, you have the option to open the uh, profiler. So here uh, you can actually move to the prediction profiler. You, you can see that uh, th thickness for uh, the first reactor on average is around 8.18 for the second reactor it increases to slightly about 8.4 and for the third reactor it's uh, even more than that by 8.83 so and you can see that uh, there is a slight difference for the vessel number but when it comes to shift uh, it's not a lot of difference as you move between the vessel reactor so this is how you can use the prediction profiler in this case and also, uh, if you go to uh, the uh, the estimates, uh, you can see uh, show prediction expression, and here uh, you can see the uh, the equations for which has been used to fit the data. And uh, you can see that another way to get the coefficient is from this table.